everyone. You guys made it to week two. Yoo-hoo! So this week, we're going to be doing your personal web page. So basically, we're going to be doing this for three weeks. This week, you're going to compose your opening page and your bio page, which can be one in the same page, plus your contact page. And then you're going to post your link in the wiki of our website. On the second week, you're going to create your blog or vlog, if you want to do that. And which, which is going to be an introduction to your blog. And then you're going to do one blog post. In week four, you're going to add a video somewhere in your site. So this should be a video that you have made yourself of you or your blog, something for you or something for your blog. It can be some, it can be as simple as using your phone to record yourself reading the introduction that you wrote on the Loud Lima discussion forum in week one. But it can also be a video that edits a variety of clips about you with or without a narration. If you already have such a video, that would be acceptable to just um, attach it to your WordPress page somewhere in the page. But the video must be accessible from a platform such as YouTube or Adobe Spark because you'll need to cre create another video for your final presentation at the end of this class. And I want it to be all set up so it doesn't become a problem later on in the semester when you're just too tired to deal with these types of technical things. So we're going to start with the, uh, the first week. I'm going to go into some more detail about how to get that first page up. So we can access the link to the WordPress here in our resources folder. This is where a lot of resources are. Uh, you can see here websites and blogs. And right there is your WordPress press link. Um, but as I mentioned last week, the best way to access everything in this course is through the schedule and here in the syllabus tab. So here's our schedule. Here we are, week two. And you can see a link right here, register for WordPress and select a name for your website. So this is the link. Start your site. So you have to decide what type of name you want for our blog. So I'm going to type in a name. John Guy Pipeline. So it doesn't have bonsai pipeline because I already have bonsai pipeline. I registered it, but this is probably what you'll get if you go for a common name. Uh, so it's offering me the bonsai with a dash here and there. But um, if you want a dot com, you'll have to pay. Uh, but if you want to, if you are willing to do a dot wordpress dot com, it's free. So since they don't have Bonsai Pipeline, they actually offer me this one with all the numbers, uh, or that one, or Bonsai Pipeline.me. So there's all these different ones, but see, these aren't these aren't free. The only ones that are free are the WordPress. So I would just try something else. I wouldn't do the dash. I would do the the Bonsai. There it is. So you could try this one right here. So the free site. So here we are. Your site has been created, and now you're ready to set it up. But before you move to the tutorial part two, I want you to really think about names. Going back to our former two choices, why would the bonsai pipeline dot dot wordpress.com be better than bonsai pipeline 4161345 <laughs> so you can choose a title like your name so lanedavy.com would be the paid 
uh, name, and lanedavy.wordpress.com would be free. If they didn't have it, I could put Lane M. Davy or Lane Davy Hawaii. So, names and titles and subtitles are important for whatever we are writing. If you're a journalist, you'll need a catchy title to attract your audience, but the title should also reflect content. So it should help you know what the article will be about and entice you to read it. Think about the articles or even the social media posts that you read and why you're encouraged to do so. For a website, titles are even more important. Not only are web titles constructed to draw viewers, but they need to be easy enough to remember and to contribute to your own personal brand or content. But we also have to consider things like search engine optimization, which basically recognizes your content by the title and the content. For example, if my page is titled lanedavy.com, it will help me to rank high in the search engines under that name. But the more that name Lane Davy appears within the website, the higher it will rank. For example, if I have lanedavy.com as a website title, then use it as a header or a subtitle, include it in my menu, and use it in my content consistently, then it is likely to appear at the top of the search engine. Creating a blog, a Twitter feed, or a social media page that is embedded in your website with the same titles also helps your rankings because the search engines see your title and your blog posts under the same terms, and they're all connected and related together, or at least they should be connected on your page. So next month, when we start our section on research and rhetoric, you'll see how academic formatting styles such as MLA, APA, or Chicago are contrastingly to what we're doing here with our websites. You cannot use color, you cannot use different fonts, or even bold your title, and must conform exactly to the rules of one particular writing format. Some reasons for this are to help teachers grade, but also to focus more strictly on the written content and the idea of objectivity as the sole source for generating meaning in the text. Personally, I have a real problem with this, but you must learn academic formats for your college papers because some te teachers will simply fail you if you don't use them. Anyways, part of the reason we are doing the website and the research paper is for you to understand the differences here. Okay, guys. Well, that's all for now. Oh, miho! We'll see you for part two. Aloha.